Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a review and final diagnosis on the Microtech Combat Troodon Bounty Hunter. So uh, when I purchased this knife, I thought it was probably the coolest knife in the entire world. And that is because it is an automatic knife, it's an out the front, and it's huge and it's based on one of the coolest characters in all of sci-fi and that is the classic bounty hunter from Star Wars, Boba Fett. Uh, what makes it sort of cool as well is that from what I understand they're making a, a Boba Fett movie uh, this year and it should be coming out sometime in the uh, near future, you know sometime in the next year or so and uh, so it makes it a little bit more special that uh, this character is getting some of the attention that it uh, deserves because a lot of people have been a fan of him for a long time. Uh, in any case, uh, I've had this knife now for a few weeks. I've gotten a sense of it, and uh, I thought I wanted to bring you guys some updated thoughts and then my final diagnosis on this guy. So, uh, again, I bought this because I thought it was cool. This was one of the first knives that I ever bought that was just sort of knife porn and that's it that's uh it's just a knife for fun uh it's not going to be something that one can every day carry this is intimidating it's loud it's bright and it's going to grab everyone's attention no matter where you go uh so it's got to be one of those purchases where you need to know what you're getting yourself into before you do it so let's learn a little bit about what's going on here exactly uh, up front is four inches of blade. So all the way back to the handle, you're getting four inches. The cutting length is right at 3.75 inches. That's an M390 blade right there. Uh, the handle length is quite long. If I get the measurements quite right, it's like five and a quarter inches. And then with that spike on the end, it's almost five and three quarters inches of handle. So quite a huge handle going on right there. Uh, some of the other dimensions on this guy right here, we've got the overall width. It does have a taper uh, on the handle, so the widest part is just under 0.6 inches. And the blade stock is coming in at 126 thousandths right there. So a nice thin blade stock for slicing. So let's break this knife down anatomically up front. As I mentioned before, is that M390 blade. This is done in the uh, Hellhound Tanto configuration right here, and I've really enjoyed it. Uh, Microtech ships all of their knives extremely sharp. I have yet to get a knife from the Marfione sort of collection that has not come hair-splittingly sharp. It's unbelievably sharp, and it's very nicely done. I'm going to move this so my camera can focus on the knife. Uh, and I've really enjoyed it. To be honest, the blade shape is extremely aggressive. Uh, it's going to be ideal for self-defense and things like that. And to be honest, that is what this knife kind of fell into. I never carried this knife outside the house uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, we'll get into that at the end of the video. But namely that automatics are uh, kind of illegal where I live, so I can't really carry this knife around. I probably shouldn't even own it, but it's okay. Uh, I like to make these videos about it, but what this knife uh, ended up being for me is a perceived self-defense knife. If I was going to go to bed and keep a knife by my bed on the nightstand, this is the one that I put there most often. And that's because this one is probably going to be the most reliable to deploy in some sort of uh, emergency situation. It's just going to come out and stay locked up. And it's extremely aggressive. It's got a nice reach and uh, the handle works pretty well. I know that that sounds really silly and ridiculous, but uh, this wasn't really a carry option for me so I tried to find a more uh, useful role for it and that's basically what it fell into for me. The blade slices pretty well. This is not going to be a food prep knife for you given all this stuff that's going on up here but it will slice things like paper and open letters and things if that's what you want to use it for. Uh, let's talk about the deployment and the action. There's no real pivot on this knife but the deployment is awesome on this. This is quite the workout for the hand though. I definitely have had to learn a little bit about hand anatomy because everyone you hand this knife to, uh, they complain after a couple of minutes that their thumbs are getting sore. Definitely you're going to be working out your adductor pollicis muscles and your uh, extensor pollicis muscles for sure. So this one, the deployment is not quite as bad, but if you don't have a strong enough thumb yet, 
The retraction into the handle can be exhausting after just a couple of them. That is a thing that people do complain about with this knife. I would hand it to some people, uh, especially kind of smaller women, and they'd have to pull with both of their thumbs and they'd be shaking. And it's, it's a very strong action. When you get used to it, it does work pretty well, but uh, it is a bit of a frustration sometimes. I kind of want an easier uh, in and out, so uh, I've handled a couple of other automatics in the interim here, and some of them are a bit smoother with the action. I understand that the spring needs to be strong, and so that sort of capture detent or whatever we're calling it needs to be strong as well, but it would be nice to see that be a little bit smoother on this knife. That would just be sort of a luxury on this. The deployment button itself is honestly a little bit sharp as well. Uh, it's definitely torn up my thumb uh, a considerable amount. I understand the need for traction, and this is a kind of a beautiful looking thing to begin with, and it does feel pretty good. The deployment's not too bad, but again, that very strong retraction strength needed combined with a relatively sharp sort of button right there means that it tears your thumb up if you get very aggressive with it, which you almost need to. Uh, but when it is, it, when it does come out, it locks up very solidly. This is the most solid lockup I've ever felt on an automatic. You can hear a little bit of some movement, but it's not felt. It doesn't translate into actual movement. All, all automatics will deploy a little bit forward. That doesn't really count, but it does not go backwards, and there's really minimal up-down side-to-side play. Uh, I've held a few more other uh, automatics, including some of the smaller Microtechs, and uh, they certainly don't have that same sort of bank vault lockup right there. Moving back to the handles, these things are done in very nice, high-quality aluminum. Uh, I really don't have a lot to complain with. Aluminum is not as exotic as titanium, but I can only imagine what the price would be if they made these out of titanium. They've done a very nice job with the contouring. Uh, what you'll notice is that there's a bit of a flare in the handle. It's skinny at front, it widens in the middle, and then it tapers down. Not as skinny as it is up front, but it tapers back down on this end, and it just feels great in the hand. It's a nice size. This fits my size hand much better, this Combat Troodon size than the Ultratex and stuff. Those are just a little bit too small, so I appreciate having the bigger handle. It's much more comfortable in the hand. I'd be much more likely to use and carry this in a slightly different configuration than this. Very, very well done. The overall weight with these aluminum handles uh, and this blade configuration, this comes in at uh, 5.7 ounces. So not particularly light with this knife, but it's not the heaviest one in my collection. Um, the handles have one major drawback, and that's this proprietary hardware. Uh, they do sell the tool to open this up. But it's a bit frustrating that they do this. Uh, the Marfione clan is kind of known for doing that. Uh, it's cool that there is no hardware visible on this side. I might almost prefer to see the hardware over here and a cleaner presentation side. That might have been a cool thing to see. But it's not that bad. It does bring the color of the red onto the front and it leaves just the yellow on the back. So it's a nice contrast. I can deal with that. Uh, I do enjoy the milling on here. It's very reminiscent of the Boba Fett character. These are some of the markings sort of on his breastplate, and then this, this almost looks like the center of his breastplate right here. This reminds me of the uh, the jetpack uh, rocket on the that he has on his back and things like that. So they've done some good uh, milling and creative things on here to sort of bring that motif through. And the wear and tear that they've done is very, very nice. It's uniform in its own way. But it, uh, it, it looks distressed, uh, just nicely distressed. It's not overly distressed. It doesn't look beat up or broken. Nothing is dinged in, but the surface finish is scratched in such a way that uh, it honestly makes me not afraid to sort of carry it and set it down kind of carelessly because, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's okay. Probably the worst part of this knife is going to be this. Uh, this is the Kubaton slash... Uh, what do you call it on the back? This the glass breaker or whatever. They actually call this the DNA extractor. And that is a very good name because look at this thing. This is a horrific, beastly, stabbing weapon of a thing right here that will definitely extract DNA from anything you stab it into. But what it really does is it prevents you from being able to carry this knife. So you put this in your pocket and then you're coming at your knife and you're, oh, oh God, oh, and it's just gonna cut you and scrape you and this is gonna scrape everything and then it's gonna get caught on your pants and cut your pants. So that made this knife practically uncarryable for me and that is why I have to sell it. And so what is my final diagnosis on this knife? 
My final diagnosis is fetish knife. And I do mean that in the most punny kind of a way, F-E-T-T -T, like Boba Fett, because this knife is just for fun. It's crazy, it is extremely cool, but it is completely uncarryable. So this one will be moving along. Tell me what you guys think of this knife down below. Click like and subscribe to my channel here. Follow me on Instagram at Dr. Frunky, and as always, take care.